Every day, the city, the region, and the people in it use and often help harvest the energy that propels us into the future. Many Northeast Ohioans are moving toward a more direct and personal relationship with their energy consumption. I moved here in 2008 and when I moved into the house, the house did not have an air conditioning system. And I considered a conventional um, air conditioning unit, but then I also thought, you know, how can I really hedge my energy costs for the rest of my time in this house and for the rest of the life of this house? So I looked at other options and I ended up um, putting in a geothermal heating and cooling system. Um, the pipes that go into the ground and go down about 150 feet and it circulates a glycol solution and that glycol solution basically transfers the constant temperature of the earth which is 55 degrees year-round into the house. It's going to have in the end about a six-year payback and the payback would have been even shorter if I didn't have to do all the duct work. This is a photo studio, so we use a lot of electricity downstairs, and we were looking for, for some way to cut down on that a little bit. Uh, we called Bold Alternatives and talked to them, as well as several other companies, about solar panels, really kind of trying to decide if solar really would work in Cleveland. Uh, after we, we did a little bit of research, we found out that, yeah, it can work. So two years ago, we put 137 solar panels on our roof, and we're real happy with that. The church members came to us uh, looking for ideas to you know, offset their you know, electric consumption and try to get as off-grid as possible. We gave them a few ideas and the one that really popped out the best was this carport project. We've integrated an electric car charging station where church members can come in you know, while they're meeting here, having services here, charge their electric vehicle, then drive home. One of the things they've actually done here is they've auctioned off 10 parking spaces under the carport. Uh, these protected, shaded parking spaces are shaded in the summertime and protected from the snow in the wintertime. This array is going to offset 90% of the church's annual electric load. Uh, we've, we've done a variety of things in the construction of this building uh, with sustainability in mind. Uh, one of the primary technologies that we took advantage of was geothermal for our heating and cooling of the facility. Hi, this is Phil Siroki. I'm with Almond Electric Company. We were involved in a design build project with Cleveland State University at their south parking garage, which is the south gateway to campus. We installed a photovoltaic system to supplement the lighting being used for the parking garage. It's meant to uh, help supplement the electricity about $3,000 a year. Energy can neither be created nor destroyed, but must be harnessed transferred from one source to another. Northeast Ohio utilities currently rely heavily on coal, oil, and natural gas for their energy. Public utilities and investors play a huge role in the future of renewable energy. They're the ones who are funding and building the larger scale projects, the ones that feed the grid, that feed the electricity grid. One of the things that helps to drive um, outcomes is, is government policy. And our policy at our public utility, Clean Public Power, is to reach 25% of the energy that we use to be produced by renewable and, and clean energy. LECO is a prime example. Putting wind turbines in the lake, 
that will allow us to demonstrate uh, that it can be done, it be, can be done inexpensively, that it can also be a reliable energy source. The mission of LEADCO is to help to develop a, an offshore wind industry in the region. Uh, we're starting with a pilot project of somewhere on the order of five to nine turbines seven miles out from here. Naturally, if, when you go out to the site, these turbines are very large. In fact, for those that are familiar with the turbine at Lincoln Electric, these turbines are, are approximately twice as big. So they are rather large machines. The fundamental goal from day one to see if this industry that is literally exploding worldwide, we're talking $400 billion, does that make sense to come here? And our goal is to really stimulate that industry and bring that kind of robust growth to the region. So when, when we look at, at the potential job impact in advanced energy, it gets pretty exciting. Um, there's been an awful lot of talk about the shale gas industry, you know, studies after study about so tens of thousands of jobs. Um, but then you look at the offshore wind potential. There's been, you know, we issued a study about a year and a half ago over the long term, and that could be 10 to 20,000 jobs. Uh, and then when you look at some of these other sectors in the next seven years, when you look at you know, fuel cells, waste energy, energy management, energy efficiency, um, grid level storage, we're looking at about 7,000 jobs in those sectors alone, and that's not even counting the supply chain. And what I think is important is that we have a diversified economy. By helping to build the advanced energy industry, that's a really exciting sector that can really help us go a long way toward that goal of developing a more resilient economy in Northeast Ohio. We're standing here today at Collinwood Bioenergy, which is a partnership between Forest City and Quasar Energy Group, a 1.3 megawatt waste energy anaerobic digestion facility. We've partnered on this project. This is our first venture together. We hope to build many more. What we do here is we receive organics from the marketplace. We convert them through a biological process to create uh, clean, renewable energy that we're selling into Cleveland Public Power's grid. 1.3 megawatts is the offsetting of about 600 homes worth of power. And with this eighth plant, most of the parts that you see in the facility have now come from Ohio. Well, we make energy and we make it from waste. So where most uh, power plants or petroleum facilities, refineries, would pay for a raw material. We get paid to take our raw material and uh, convert it biologically. So our cost for energy is far less. We are providing the research that, that gives viability to the types of plants that we could provide to the Department of Energy to try to make alternative fuels out of that. We're running out of fuel uh, worldwide because we have to come up with the next generation of aviation fuels by being extreme green. And if we use halophytes, which is what the plants that you see in here, which are salt tolerating plants, and we use algae climatically adapted to salt water, and we're growing something that not only can be used for fuel, but it's also a food product. We have a, a project getting ready right now to take water and make it into the hydrogen fuel, and we're gonna get uh, donated from United Technologies a, a bus that the RTA is gonna drive around Cleveland very soon, and we'll be able to fuel it with just our water. The fossil fuel industry is so highly subsidized that the only way to level the playing field between renewables and fossil fuels is to then also provide incentives for renewable energy. The project behind me is a 103 kW solar array that powers more than 30% of the, of the electricity needs for the Village of Valley View Recreation Center. It's a great project and without those incentives this project would have never happened. Fossil fuels are non-renewable. That is, they draw on finite resources that will eventually dwindle, becoming too expensive or too environmentally damaging to retrieve. In contrast, renewable energy resources, such as wind and solar, 
are constantly replenished and will never run out. When we first got involved in, in, in the mid-90s, uh, uh, both wind and solar were very expensive. Uh, they weren't as efficient, they weren't as reliable, the products were, were uh, still in their infancy to a large extent, even though solar was invented you know, 50 years ago. The good news is that, is, is that technology is very mature now, it's very solid, reliable. Uh, we put these systems in and they, and they, they go in very smoothly once, once uh, uh, it's more of a construction project now than, than a technology project even. We've got a, a nice uh, skilled workforce that's available, uh, the different colleges and, and, and uh, uh, community colleges and universities in the state now are very good about training people now so we're, we're able to find the skilled workers where in the, in the early days we had to train everybody ourselves. We in the last three years have proposed with over 100 industry partners. Obviously they get the opportunity to work with some really talented faculty to help solve their problems and as well there are students that get the benefit of working on this breakthrough research and through that benefit they either ultimately go to work for some of these companies or they go to start up their own companies in these spaces and help contribute to the uh, local economy. Over half of the students will stay in Northeast Ohio in the state of Ohio. That's what brought me to Cleveland was this job and this opportunity to work in alternative energy. This is the Sundial Center's Sun Farm. It's an outdoor test facility featuring 14 solar trackers, 148 solar panels, and room for up to 8,000 material samples on sun at a time. We're interested in the lifetime degradation properties of solar modules and materials. And if you can make a module last twice as long, you can effectively make it cost half as much. I manage uh, a group of engineers who are working on the development of our Hikari 250 watt microinverter. EQED's entry into this market is to focus on reducing the cost of this type of equipment. Cleveland's practicality, perseverance, passion for innovation, advanced technology and manufacturing strength, and our resilient and enduring city are the reasons advanced and renewable energy work here. In many different ways, uh, we can not only save um, costs, but also be friendly to the environment and be economically uh, profitable. At our core, we know how to make things here in Northeast Ohio. We've got a strong legacy and supply chain across a number of industries. And if you think about advanced energy, you know, that requires a lot of process equipment, a lot of facilities, a lot of components and parts that we can make here. So we're really well positioned to not only have the intellectual capital to develop these solutions, but then to go ahead and produce them, manufacture them, and sell them here and ship them around the world, really drive tremendous growth in our local economy. In order to transition to renewable energy, we need you involved. We need you to get involved in your local, state, and federal policy so that we can pass strong renewable energy policy that will ignite the renewable energy industry. It'll create green jobs, it'll build a sustainable economy. Northeast Ohio is making the shift to cleaner energy because it is practical, feasible, better for the community, and better for the environment.